just look at that. That is so awesome. Once again, we find ourselves out here under a beautiful starry night sky. And what a joy it is. This is the life. Where else would you want to be? You know, that brings me to the point of this episode. And I want to talk about the simple things, the things that we walk past every day and we don't take any notice of, you know, and they're all around us. Now, it just so happens that the subject of our photography adventure tonight is this old fence post. Yep, that's what we're going to be shooting here tonight. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to light paint this fence post. We're going to shoot the Milky Way behind, which, by the way, is coming up. The core is over there in the east. You can see Jupiter and we can see Venus. It's just fantastic. So let's get into it. Okay, well I do admit I have a fascination with farm gates and fences. I guess there's just something about them that's got character and they've got charm. And I, I, I just love the old rustic timber and the um, rusty barbed wire fences. There's something about them. So anyway, we find ourselves here again tonight to shoot yet another one. But bear with me because I think this will be quite interesting. Now, tonight's subject is going to be a little bit more complicated than what we've been doing the past week or so because I'm incorporating multiple layered background skies and we're going to do that in uh, Sequata. Now somebody kindly let me know that Sequata is pronounced the same way as Equator with an S on the front. So I'm going to call it Sequata from now on and if I don't you tell me. So the plan tonight is to shoot I think about 10 background layers and I'm going to shoot those at f2.2 and I'm going to lift the ISO to 10,000 on my Z6 um, and lower the shutter speed to 10 seconds. So what I'm doing, I'm balancing out the shutter speed and the ISO. What I'm losing in the 10 seconds, I'm gaining in the ISO. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want to have those 10 uh, shots as close together as I possibly can get them so that there's less movement in the stars when I go to stack them in the software. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do is shoot 10 uh, dark frames and that's the idea of that is to help reduce the noise in the image and uh, Sequator does a pretty good job of that. Then what I'm going to do is uh, stop down the aperture and change the focus and lower the ISO and I'm going to do the light painting of the foreground. So let's get started. So once again, I'm shooting with the Nikon Z6 with the 20mm f1.8 lens fitted via the FTZ adapter. And this, of course, is a favourite combination of mine and I use it all the time. Okay, so here I have my favourite app for locating the Milky Way and this is called Photo Pills. I've mentioned this many times before and for those who have never heard of this, uh, there's a description here, but um, what this is showing me is that the Milky Way core is rising up directly over this fence post. And the PhotoPills augmented reality view, which is what we're looking at now, it shows you in real time where the Milky Way is going to be in relation to the foreground. So you can see it there right over the top of the fence post. All right, so what I've just done then is focused the camera and I've got it ready to take the background shots of the night sky. So I'm going to do that now and I'm going to take them smack bang one after the other, probably only the barest minimum interval between the shots, probably one second. Okay, well, there they are. And there's the 10 shots. They look exactly the same, which is the whole point of this. Um, and there's the settings, f2.2. ISO 10,000 at 10 second uh, shutter speed, white balance of 3750 Kelvin, uh, and that's to get a nice color sky. As well as that, I took another 10 frames with the exact same settings, but with the lens cap on. These are known as dark frames, and they help the stacking software remove noise from the final stack. Okay, so as far as the light painting goes, I do have a fairly standard procedure, and you would have heard it before. I tend to um, change the aperture to f5, I'll adjust the ISO right back down to 500 and I'll leave the shutter speed where it is at 10 seconds because that should give me plenty of time to get around and do the light painting. So that's what we'll do now. 
Okay, so here we go with the light painting. Now, if you've been watching my recent videos, you would have seen my methods already. Um, but I'll go through it again because the whole point of these videos is to educate and to help people understand what I'm doing. So, first thing first, I'm getting off on an angle. I'm not shooting the same angle as where the camera is facing. So I'm doing some side light and as much as I can backlight. Now remember, I've focused the camera onto the foreground. So it's not now focused at infinity on the stars, it's focused onto the fence at the start. Now, when I um, change the aperture to f5, that means the focal plane is far uh, deeper. So I've got much more latitude with focus, and that helps a lot. Also, f5 is a much sharper aperture than f2.2, where I shot the background. And you can see what I'm doing here. I'm lightly moving the light, painting light, into the subject from different angles. Remember, these are 10 second exposures, so I've only got 10 seconds to do it. And I'm just making sure everything's covered that I want covered. Well, you notice also I'm down low to the ground, so that means that I'm getting more texture and shape into the grass and the stuff that's down low to the ground there. Now, the other thing I do sometimes is get nice and close like this and just get overhead and just quickly just give it a nice little piece of light straight down like so. That can give it a real good uh, boost in the um, shadows. The shadows change direction and that's one of the things with this light painting that happens. When you're painting from different angles, the shadow moves and because the shadow is moving, it means that the shape of the light changes around the subject and that's what we're looking for. Just making sure I've got everything covered. As I've said before, it doesn't matter if I get myself in the shot because I can just uh, rub that out later in uh, Photoshop with uh, layer masking. Okay, I think we're done. Well, I think the capture process is complete. Now I'm wanting to show you all the steps required to get an impressive image. So to do that, I'll be taking you back to the editing studio to see how we turn all this work in the field into a little bit of magic. Come on, let's go. As I mentioned last night out in the field, the capture process is only halfway there. More than any other form of photography, Nightscape raw images require quite a lot of massaging to get the end result we want. And this particular shot has quite a lot going on. So let's get into it. Okay, well here we are opened up into Lightroom. And as you can see, down the bottom here, I've got my 10 frames of my background exposure at f2.2, uh, 10 second exposures at ISO 10,000. Right next to those, you can see I've got a whole stack of black frames of exactly the same duration uh, exposure wise. They're my dark frames, I'm gonna put those into Sequator. Then next to that, I've got um, quite a number of, you'll see them here, light painted frames of the fence post. And these, there's about uh, 13 of those along the bottom here. And these are all uh, lit with my standard light painting method uh, at ISO uh, 500 at F5, also all of 10 second exposures. So first thing I'm going to do is uh, select all of these frames. So that's 10 of those and 10 of the dark frames by holding down shift. You can see I've got 20 frames selected there. I'm going to uh, export those out of the software here as TIFF files. And I'll do that now. And then I'm going to export uh, those, import those I should say, into Sequator. So let's do that now. Now when I start uh, Sequator, I'm just gonna go up here into the top here where it double click on star images and it asks me which ones I wanna import into there and I'm going to just select, which is on my other screen, you can't see them, but I'm selecting the 10 images, clicking open. And you see there they all are up here, the 10 of those and it's showing one of those there. Then I'm gonna select the noise images. Remember they're my dark frames. So there's 10 of those as well. 
I'm just clicking those over here. Click open on that. And you can see them all um, populating this screen here. Uh, the output here, double click on that, and it's gonna ask me where I wanna export those to. So all I'm going to do is export that back into the folder where I've got all those TIFF files. Okay, so here we go to um, Align Stars. Now, what I'm going to do here is click on, firstly, select best pixels, push that right across to strict. Then I'm gonna click on freeze ground. Very important to, that I wanna freeze the ground because I don't want any of this foreground, even though it's just a black silhouette here, I don't want any of that to look like it's blurry or moving because I just wanna select the stars. I'm gonna do that in a moment. Sky region, I'm gonna select uh, an irregular mask. You can see that down here. And what that does is gives me the opportunity, as you can see, when I click, I'm just holding down the mouse here and clicking with the, the left mouse, painting over the sky. And it's automatically putting these um, diagonal lines on the foreground. And by using the scroll wheel on the mouse, I can get it closer into the, the edge, as you can see me doing there. All I'm really trying to do here is select all of the stars and get right in close, as close as I possibly can to that foreground. So you can see it's a fairly straightforward uh, way of doing it. Now, I think it works really well and my hat's off to the creators of this program. I think they've done a marvelous job, especially considering it's absolutely free. All right, so there we go. So that is all I have to do. I've simply selected all of the sky and now I'm just gonna click start down the bottom here and let it go through its paces. Okay, so you can see that that's taken one minute and 39 seconds to do that. Uh, and it'll show now our completed stacked image and that looks absolutely fantastic. That has now saved that as a TIFF file back where I told it to go to. So my next job is to go back into Lightroom. Okay, now I've saved you guys the time uh, here. It took about 10 minutes to load those layers up into uh, Photoshop. Now, one thing I wanna do now is import on add to these images the one that we uh, created in um, Sequator. So let's go and find that. Um, hang on, where is it? Uh, fence post, there we go. And there it is right there. So we're just gonna open that up. Uh, and I'm gonna copy and paste this picture into the other ones. To do that, um, just copy, Control C, and get rid of that, Control V into there. You can see, that's pasted now into the top of all of this. What I'm going to do is uh, bring that down to the bottom, all the way down to the bottom. So I'll just drag the sky layer, the background layer down to the bottom. And the reason I did that is so that I can actually see what's on top of it when I, when I enable all of these masks in here, in these layers on top. To save time, because I don't want this to go on for ages, I'm gonna um, select all of these images by holding down shift and going down to the, bottom uh, of the foreground layers there, they're all selected. And I'm gonna to go to the blend mode here, normal, and change that to lighten. And now you can see roughly what the final product is going to look like. It's by no means ready to go yet. And so what I'm going to do here is select the top layer only here. I'm just gonna turn off all of these other layers, including the bottom one. So I'm just working on the top layer. Now you've seen me do this before, but I'm gonna grab a layer mask here, click on that, that's created a layer mask. And by going over here to the brush tool, right here, and clicking on the brush tool, making sure it's on black here instead of white, 100% opacity and going up to the size of the brush, I'm gonna make it fairly large, and the softness of the brush fairly harsh at this point in time, because this makes it quicker. I'm just gonna rub out the sky. Now you'll notice here that I'm simply just rubbing out what I consider to be the background sky. There could well be a little bit of the foreground that I've just rubbed out here. Um, and so what I'm gonna do now is just select a softer brush and just make it a bit smaller. And just go back here and make, whoops, and turn that to white. So when it's white, it, rub, it actually puts it back into the frame. So that's really good. Um, down here, it's possible I've rubbed out something, but I won't know until I have a look at it. So I'm just gonna enable the background layer. Yeah, now see, see this fence post here and this one here, they're part of my foreground. 
So I, on the other layers, I want those to be visible. So what I've found is when I'm creating these layer masks, it's, it's a lot quicker when you can actually um, copy the layer down through through the layer. So if I go back under that top layer and make sure I'm white here, I'm just going to paint that in. You won't see anything here because um, it's not affecting this image yet. But that will make a difference later when I go back to the previous shots that have got, got the other um, layers light painted back here. All right, so I'll turn on the second layer and just hold down Alt on the keyboard and copy that layer mask down. Do the same thing again on the third one. Some of these, by the way, I'm gonna possibly not even use. I don't necessarily need them all. I'm just doing the same thing here just to show you how this all works. And the next one, you can see when I enabled that layer, this became visible over this side. So once again, you can see the light painting disappeared there. And you'll see the same thing here. This bit here is still there. So on that one, yeah. So I'm gonna get rid of that. So I'll make sure that's black over here and just rub it out. That's how simple it is. Just rub it out. Enable the next layer. Now you can see this, this is my torch here. You can see light painted. So if I just copy, hold that layer, Alt, drag it down and once again the layer mask isn't totally rubbed out here so I'm going to rub that out. This is what happens when you um, copy layer masks because if I was doing this for myself without you guys watching I would do it a lot more finer and I wouldn't be quite, I'd be a bit more fussy but because you guys are here and I'm conscious of the time frame um, I'm very much rushing through this very quickly because the idea is just to give you the, the theory that's involved and for you guys to go and try it for yourselves. So you can see I'm copying that layer mask down as we go down the stack here. There's one there. Oops, got to make sure that's black over here. I've done that before, haven't I? There we go. Rub that out. Yep, that all looks pretty good. And now the last one. And rub that out. And again, I've got to go over here, make sure I'm on the layer mask that I want to use. And just rub it out. Now I know I've gone over that very, very quickly. Now there's a number of fine tuning um, elements to this image. For example, there's a couple of these that I don't even think I want. For example, that one, um, I'm gonna rub more of that picture out. So to do that, I'm gonna get my brush, soft, a soft brush and a little bit larger size, make sure it's still 100% opacity. And I'm just gonna pretty much just rub a lot of that out. Now I'm gonna make that even larger and just sort of feather the edge of it, as you can see there. So that just gives it a little bit more creative. Looks like it's painted a bit better. So what I'm gonna do is just go through each of the layers and work out what I don't want. Um, and sometimes it's hard to know what you don't want until you see it. So for example, this fence post at the front here has got too much light on it, and I've just got to establish where all that light's coming from. I'm going to drop my brush a little bit and just lighten the edge of it so it gets a bit more shadow on that top layer. Second layer, I think it's a little bit hot on the top here. So I'm gonna do the same thing there, just a little bit. And I can drop the opacity here to be a bit more subtle with the, with the effect that I'm getting. As you can see, a third layer down, I think I don't want it too dark on the top there. But what I might do is actually get rid of some of the foreground around the bottom. I mean, fairly large brush, sorry, and a very soft one. And what I'm doing there is, you can't see much happening because it's a subtle change. And I've got the other layers um, enabled. That's why you can't tell, tell what difference it's making. Okay, I'll just go down. Hardly any difference there. In fact, that, that probably doesn't even need to be there, that layer, so I'm just gonna turn it off. Now, you can see up, up the back there, what's happening there. So with that one, I'm just gonna feather in that that's why I've got a large brush. See how big the brush is? I'm feathering it. So it's not, I'm, I'm creating this soft edge by using a really, really large brush and it's at 53% opacity. So yeah, I think that looks pretty good. Go down to the next one. So that's again on that edge of that grass down the back here. You can see what's happening. I'll just leave it for the moment. Yeah, not much at all in that. In fact, probably doesn't need to be there. I'll just take it out. You can see what's happening here. Some of these layers are doing nothing like that one. There's nothing there, so I'm just gonna leave it out. 
And this is because I've overpainted when I've lit the foreground. Now this one here is on that center post. I think it's a little bit too hot. And so what I'm going to do there is make get my brush to be smaller and very, very soft. We're still on about 53% opacity and just soften the edge of it just a tiny little bit. And I think that looks better. Let's go down to the next one. Okay, that's just some grass over there in the background. Um, and I will get rid of some of that because I think it's a little bit too much. Once again, a bigger brush and just see how I can just sort of make it soften as it comes into the frame. Next one down is this foreground here. Um, and yeah, I think there's too much of that as well. So what I'm going to do is make a quite a large brush and just feather it in. So I'm not actually painting over it directly, I'm feathering it over it. And that gives us a whole lot more control over the light. All right, second last one. As you can see there, it's just a little bit. And the last layer is, yeah, you can see what that's doing. So that second last one and the last one are similar in what they're actually achieving. The reality is, guys, that you can, you can play around with this to your heart's content. Just because I'm not doing a whole lot to this image here doesn't mean that I wouldn't if I had a bit longer to play with it, because I'm sure I would. But I'm just giving you the techniques because otherwise this video is going to go on forever. Just looking at the, the image now, it looks pretty good. I, I, I like the feel of it. I like the texture of it. This bottom layer, I'm going to do this technique that I've showed you before. I'm going to add an adjustment layer, a curves adjustment layer by clicking on that little um, circle down the bottom and just put a, a simple S curve into it. And what that's gonna do is make the sky pop out a bit more. When I click it on and off, you can see the difference that it's made. Not too much, just enough. Well, the colors can be modified a little bit. And one of the ways to do that is to add a, um, another adjustment layer and I'll, I'll do a photo filter just on the top there. Now you can see that because I put an orange warming filter on the top layer right up the top. Now, if, because it's on the top, it's affecting everything underneath it, including the sky. So if I click that on and off, you can see the difference it makes. I think I like what that's done to the fence post and the, and the ground here. You know, again, it's, it's a matter of opinion. If you don't like it on the, the uh, layer down the bottom, the sky layer, I can, uh, there's a couple of ways I can do that. One would be to create all of these foreground layers and put them into a group. Uh, I've showed you that in a previous video and then apply that photo filter to just the group. Um, but I'm saving time here today. So what I'm going to do is simply select the mask that's created here on that photo filter, go up to my brush tool again, make it big, biggish, and it's still at about 50% opacity. And I'm just gonna rub some of, some of that out in the sky. This is all very selective in your, what you like and what you don't like. So. You know, I'm just showing you some options here. Overall though, I, I really like it. Now one thing I might do here is um, with, with the uh, sky layer, I might just add another exposure. Here we go, that's what I'm after. I'm just gonna drop the exposure a little bit, but I could use it. If I wanted to make that sky just look a little bit darker and a bit more broody and moody, um, I've just dropped the exposure. It's as simple as that. If I wanna change it again, I can double click it and, and increase the exposure a fraction. So in combination with the, the curves adjustment layer, see the curves adjustment layer brings in contrast to the image and the exposure just simply drops the overall exposure. There's a number of ways you can do all of these things, but I like the basic look of this, okay? So now there's a couple of things here which I have also mentioned before. One, if I wanna come back and edit this image, I'm not gonna flatten this image at all because if I flatten the image, it becomes irreversible. Anything that I've done to this image, I can't take back and change. But for me personally, I am gonna flatten the image. There's just way too many uh, massive layered files on my computer already and you can see it there. So what I'm going to do now is uh, close Photoshop, click yes on, on that to uh, save the changes to Photoshop and that's gonna open it back up in Lightroom as you can see, and there it is. We've got our image back into Lightroom. Oh, I think it looks pretty amazing. F for full screen shows you what the image looks like. Now, just looking at the image, the basic uh, edits I've done on the fence line here looks fantastic, nice and sharp and crisp. And also that stacked guy out of Sequita is absolutely amazing. I think it looks really noiseless. And so it's really worthwhile going to the extra effort to get that 
sky stacked. And you, you saw how simple it was to get it there. It was absolutely a piece of cake, really, it's shooting in the field. So I'm very happy with how this image has actually come up. All right, well, I'm really happy with this shot, but I'm quite interested in what you guys think regarding the final image. If you'd like to leave a comment below, I'd be more than happy to answer any questions you may have. And I'd love for you to subscribe to the channel. And if you do, then hit the bell icon next to the subscribe button down below. Then you'll be notified of any new video releases. And so it comes to a close part four of our series on light painting. And I'm very happy with the, how this one's come up. And in fact, I'm really pleased with how all of the images came up. And I've been really thrilled with the response I've got from you guys throughout uh, the previous videos. So once again, I wanna thank you for joining me. It means so much to me to have you along for the ride. And I really look forward to seeing you next time out under the stars. See you later.